Let's talk about optimization. Optimization is an important topic in machine learning. When we are building our machine learning models, we measure the model's performance against some targets. We can call this error. And with the training process, as the model gets better, we hope to see that this error also goes down. And the optimization methods are usually iterative processes. And at each iteration, we'll, opt, we'll again hope to see that the error goes down and eventually almost goes to zero. Let's make some definitions. When we are using optimization in machine learning, we usually try to minimize some functions. And these functions are usually error functions or cost functions. We can write it down like this, f of w, where f is the function and w is the input. When we are optimizing this function during the minimization, we try to find the w that's going to give us the least amount of error. For some reason, if you try to maximize this function, we also try to find the w that's going to give us the highest error. Let's take, let's take a look at these visualizations here. My first error function is f of w, 0 0.6 times w squared. So this is a simple function. So if I try to find the minimum of this function, actually this orange point is going to be the point that I will be looking for. Similarly, if I want to find the minimum of this second function, which uses two inputs in this case, this orange place is the minimum area. When I'm trying to find this minimum, I can use some tools. Here we are going to use something called gradient. In the gradient optimization, we are going to calculate a gradient value, which is going to tell us the direction and the rate of the fastest increase in the function. We calculate this by taking the partial derivative of our cost function with respect to the input, and this is going to tell us the gradient. Gradients are going to have a direction and a value because of that, we can also call them vectors. Let's take a look at these examples. For example, for this function, I can calculate the gradient by taking the partial derivative. And at this point, the gradient looks at this side. Similarly, I can calculate the gradient and again with this two input function. And when I do that, this time, this gradient looks like this. And again, as you see, this is pointing the direction that the function is going to increase. Let's calculate these gradients with some examples. Here we are going to use the same function, 0 0.6 times w square. And let's also remember that we are taking the partial derivative of this with respect to w, so it becomes 1.2w. This is our gradient. And we are going to plug in some values here. And at each location, we will calculate the gradients. For w equals 2, we have 2 here. We multiply it with 1.2. It gives us 2.4. And this is our gradient. And the first thing we realize with this is that this is positive. So it actually means that when we are going to the right of 2, it means that the function is actually going to increase. Similarly, if I plug in this number 4, this is again a positive number. This means that again the function is going to increase when I'm going towards to right, towards the right. If I go and use minus 3, in this case I have a negative number. This means that this time the function is going to increase when I'm going towards the left. As we see actually this is correct because this function increases like this. So as we go towards the left further, we see that the function also gets larger. At this point zero, it is also zero. So it means that the gradient is also zero here. We can also use another analogy here. When we are actually calculating this gradient, we, we can also call this as calculating the slope of the line that is tangent to this model here. So when we are calculating the slope, this is also equal to our gradient. So at this point, for example, the slope is 4.8. At this point, it's 2.4. At this point, it is 
minus 3.6 and at this point it is zero this also makes sense because we don't have any slope here this is just a straight line at this point Let's introduce our gradient descent algorithm here. So we learned how gradient works, and we will put this into play in our optimization problem. Gradient descent uses the gradient and tries to find the minimum of a function. We will do this iteratively, and what we mean by iteratively is that we will do this multiple times, and at each time we will get closer to the minimum. We will take steps towards to the minimum. Let's take a look at the algorithm. We will start with an, with an initial point, w, and then we are going to update this w. For example, when I'm calculating the updated w, I use the current w, then I take a step size parameter and multiply that with my gradient. And then I use this value and then I iteratively keep going. Over here, for example, when I start from this point, I calculate my gradient. If you remember, actually, at these points, the gradient will be negative. So I have a negative gradient here. I will use this positive step size, multiply them. And as I have another negative here, actually, two negatives, this becomes a positive. So this is telling me that my new W is actually going to be larger. So this makes sense because at this point, uh, actually, uh, I am going towards the right. So W is actually increasing towards the right. So this makes sense in this case. So let's summarize what we did here. So we learned this gradient descent method. This is an optimization method to find the minimum of a cost function. And in this method, as the name suggests, we are using the gradient. And we take the gradient at a point. We also use a step size. This is usually a, a small number. We multiply them and we, we subtract that number from our current location. And this gives us our next step. When we do this iteratively, starting from this point, for example, we will eventually go towards the minimum of this ball shape. So this is pretty much how gradient descent works. Let's talk about the step size. Choosing the step size correctly is critical because if you take step size too small, usually this training process takes very long time because we will take very small steps each time and overall it's going to take us a lot of steps to get to the minimum. On the other hand, if you take a very large step size, this will usually overshoot. So for example, let's, th let's take a look at these graphs. On the graph, on the left, so let's start with this. Let's assume this is my initial value. During my, during my uh, gradient descent process, I start from here and I take small steps towards to the minimum. So let's look at these orange values here. If I had a large step size, this could actually uh, cause some trouble. Over here, for example, with a very large step size, there is this chance of overshooting. So I can start from here, then come here, come here, and here, and here. So as you see, this is a very undesirable situation. Let's take a look at another scenario. In this scenario, actually, you see a more complex cost function. For example, we have a global minimum, but we also have a local minimum. So when our step size is too large we can actually also skip some of these global minimum or maybe let's say candidate global minimum areas so for example in this case starting from this point uh, taking our very large step size we can easily pass these uh, important global minimum so this kind of explains why it is important to select our step size correctly and step size is going to be a parameter actually in our machine learning models. We will try to optimize that and we will also try to select that very carefully. 